Hello, it's Alex. Welcome back. I'm going to join in today with Friday Sews, which is an idea from Jen's Jen of Jen's Sewing Room uh, to have a bit of a kind of Friday catch up, a bit perhaps more chatty rather than uh, project specific. Um, lots of other people are joining in with it. So if you want to find some new sewing vloggers, if you type in Friday Sews and I'll put in the description box below other people that are taking part. But I've watched Jen's and I watched Kristen's and it was really nice to have that sort of chatty catch up so I thought I would join in. And really my week kicked off more or less after I posted my last video because I hadn't really had a chance to use my new sewing room which I was dying to do. Um, and in fact while that video was uploading I finished making the PJs that I had sat on the side here ready cut out for my dog, uh, which was a nice quick easy thing to do and um, he did honestly need pyjamas. I'm not one of those people that goes around dressing their animals up uh, because I've got the kids or young people all here instead of at uni they uh, and they tend to be up late at night they've been in the kitchen and saying that the dog was cold and he's a daft thing he kicks his blanket off and hasn't worked out how to put it back on so I made him some pajamas and <laughs> they've gone down very well the pattern wasn't 100% brilliant but anyway that was my first project all done before I'd even yeah gone live with the last video so that was really nice to get going and I just want to say thank you very much. I am absolutely bowled over by how many of you really like the idea of me talking to Kath, my mother-in-law, uh, fellow sewist and uh, ex-soprano. I don't know, are you ever an ex-soprano? Anyway, retired soprano. Um, I'm definitely, definitely going to do that. I had already talked to her about the idea. Um, she often gives talks to kind of uh, WI groups and townswomen guilds and that kind of thing so she's quite used to that sort of thing and she's really up for it. She did have her Covid vaccine last week and because we've got this new variant running rife here in the UK even though we're in a support bubble with her she's decided she just wants to be super cautious for another week or two while she builds up some immunity with the first dose of the vaccine and then we will get together and definitely do that. So it'll be a few weeks yet, maybe two or three weeks, something like that. But I'm so pleased you like that idea. And what I've been sewing this week is a shirt dress, um, which isn't finished. And it, the reason it's not finished is I made it in this fabric. I showed you, I don't know, was it about October? Something like that. It's obviously this lovely teal color. It's um, a needle cord. It's got a tiny little bit of stretch in it that I got from Sew Me Sunshine with the voucher that my husband had bought for my birthday back in April. And I'm going to show it to you when it's properly finished. The reason I haven't finished, I've so done all the sewing, but um, it's the ready to sew Jolene dress. It has a lot of buttons and I'm really struggling with not being able to go and choose things like buttons and, you know, fabric as well, to be honest in person because we're on quite a severe lockdown here in the UK so for some bizarre reason fabric shops are considered unessential. Um, so I'm not, yeah, I just cannot get to go and see um, buttons in person. I've been through my stash, didn't have anything that was quite right because it's uh, one of those colours isn't it, it's not really green, it's not really blue. It's a bit of a struggle and in the end what I've decided to do is to go for press studs because obviously being a cord it's quite a kind of hardy, yeah, it's kind of same family as denim isn't it, quite hardy kind of fabric. Um, so I've ordered some, I've ordered some prim, they're the colour ones, I've got some but not in this colour, hold on, my camera doesn't want to focus on them so I'll insert a picture but yeah they're the prim ones they come in all sorts of different colors and I've ordered them in navy which I guess is as close as I'm going to get and I think what I'm hoping is that against the fabric it will sort of take on some of this tealy color um, but even Amazon didn't have them or nowhere with next day shipping had them so in theory they should arrive by Monday could be later because the post isn't brilliant at the moment because of Covid 
Um, so I've had to just put it on hold and wait for those to arrive. I'm going to spend a bit of time at the weekend perfecting the technique for these press studs. So if anyone's got any top tips, let me know. I have used them before. I used some on, I made an assembly line coat in waterproof material. It's absolutely brilliant, that coat actually, for dog walks when it's not too cold. And they went on beautifully with that coat and I thought, haha, I've got it all, you know, aren't I marvellous? I've got this down off pat. But already a couple of them, when you go to open the stud, have pinged off. So um, I'm going to do a little bit of practicing on that because I've obviously got these ones here. Uh, but yes, once that's finished, I will show you that. And I have to say, it went like clockwork. You know, sometimes sewing doesn't always. I don't even think there was any unpicking. And it's not often you can say that. Um, so yeah, it was a nice way to kind of christen the room. However, my next project, not so much, I <laughs> decided to make a pair of, uh, or a second pair of the Mountain View jeans from Itch to Stitch. I showed you that I'd made some before Christmas in that black uh, leggings fabric. No, it's not leggings, jeggings fabric from TFG Fabrics. And over Christmas and into January, I've been wearing them so much, to be honest. <laughs> mostly because I ate quite a lot over Christmas and some things are a little bit tight at the moment and they're very, very stretchy and very accommodating. And so I kind of feel like I'm wearing something easy like a pair of joggers or a pair of leggings, but they look just a little bit smarter. Um, so I wanted to make another pair out of denim that do look a bit more like a pair of jeans and perhaps less like a pair of trousers. I'd already bought, sorry, my hair, there we go. Uh, I'd already bought the um, stretch denim again from TFG Fabrics before Christmas. So I dug it out and the pattern asks for, I think, two meters of fabric and I'd ordered a meter and a half. And I thought to myself, well, I must've done that because I've already made some. So I kind of did that based on experience. I could not get the pattern out of a metre and a half fabric. So I've had to fold it all away and possibly order, or probably order, a metre of that stretch denim from TFG next time I'm ordering something from them. I don't think I want to bother paying postage just for a metre of denim. Um, so that got put on the back burner. And I was just in a kind of like, right, what shall I do next? I think this was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. And there's been a bit of a thing going round in the social media world of sewing about zero waste sewing this week. Um, and I had been tagged or one of my pictures had been uh, reposted by the Sew Over 50 group on Instagram because I had made the Maynard dress from Elba Textiles. It's a couple of years ago, it's me with too many blonde highlights in my hair. Um, and I absolutely love that dress. I made it at the time in a brown linen and I've been meaning to make another one, mostly for no other reason than I really like it. But I'm not one of those people that feels comfortable wearing linen in the winter. I don't know why. So I wanted to make a more wintry one or one that I can wear now. And I shared it to my stories and then I was sitting here thinking, right, what am I going to make next? And then I just thought, let's just do it now. I really like that dress and um, yeah, going to make another one. So I have made a start on that and it's a very unconventional dress, both to look at really and also to sew, partly because it's zero waste and partly just due to the nature of the design. It's got a, a kind of wrap, but it has folds at the front. It has slightly disjointed hems. It's slightly asymmetric in parts. It's really unusual. It's definitely not one of those patterns where, if you're like me, what I tend to do is go, duh, 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 make a collar. I don't follow all the instructions necessarily. I just go, right, I'll make a collar. 
this is not one of those patterns this is one of those you've really got to pay attention to it because it is so unconventional so what i thought i would do is i will try and document i'm not going to do a tutorial but i'm going to document the process along the way so i've started that i've got my pattern all ready to go here because you print it out as one big sheet and you don't cut the individual pattern pieces so i got that far last night and I'd gone and had a look in my stash to see what fabric I had and I'm now at the point where I'm a little undecided so I thought I would show you what my options are and maybe you can tell me what you think. So my first thought was to use this which is the fabric I had said I would make the oversized shirt from the assembly line in. This is the Mind the Maker, I think it's called Unsquared fabric I bought this from Lamarzi and I thought that because it kind of has they're not stripes but they're it's linear that when you've got such an unconventional um, set of shapes to the design of the dress that it might you know folds and things it might be really interesting to have it kind of highlighted by the linear nature of this fabric and I really do love this fabric. It's got the right kind of weight because although it's viscose, it's a viscose twill and it's not a flimsy viscose at all. So that was my first thought. But having thought about it overnight, my concern is that it's not, as a finished garment, it's not going to be massively wintry. And it's still, you know, it's January. It, I mean, it was snowing this week, so it's freezing right now and although spring is coming it's let's be honest in the UK it's not coming for a good few weeks so I'd rather have something a bit more wintry that I can put um, perhaps you know just a layer underneath and a pair of tights and I'm not sure this is going to work with black tights and boots I don't know so at the moment I'm putting that back on the assembly line oversized shirt list I'm not 100% sure because I still think it would look really nice, uh, maybe for spring. Let me know what you think. Uh, my other option is I found this, which is some plaid flannel. And initially I thought, yeah, that's going to look fab. It's going to look kind of Vivian Westwoody. It's nice and soft, so it would feel lovely and wintry. Uh, but now I'm thinking, is that going to be a bit of a sort of statementy kind of dress? I'd rather have something that I can just bung on and not feel is too much, yeah, too much of a statement. So I'm not 100% sure. I am quite pleased though, because this was at the bottom of my stash and I'd forgotten I had it. So it's good from that point of view. But that's another option. I've got plenty of that. I'm disappointed because I found this one, which is a similar thing, and I think this would work really well, and not being as vibrant as the red, but unfortunately, it's short by about that much. Then I've got this one, which I think is a strong contender, which is a stretch woven, but the amount of stretch in it is minimal. It's sort of what I'd refer to as comfort stretch. So that is a kind of wine colour, with a dot on it. Um, I've had this in my stash for a good couple of years, so it would be nice to use it. No idea. No, actually, I think I bought it on Etsy. Um, not 100% sure. And I think that would be nice. It feels nice, and um, I think having a little bit of stretch in it isn't going to be a concern. It's not like it's a ponty or a jersey or anything. And then the other option is this which is brown with a little sort of flock men on it. <laughs> I have got enough of this. I bought this in a de-stash on Instagram. There's a lady who has an account, which I think is called de-stash for kids with cancer, children with cancer, um, which is a great way of raising funds for children with cancer. And I've sold, sold things. Well, it's not sell you don't you basically donate the fact that you're giving the item and you pay for the postage and somebody buys it and it raises funds for the charity brilliant idea and i bought this on there again maybe a year ago 
might be longer. Um, and I'm thinking that could work quite well as a wintry dress. The two most likely contenders are this one and the um, wine coloured one uh, with a temptation to use that Mind the Maker fabric at a later date. But let me know what you think because I don't think I'm going to get started on this for probably only a day or so. Uh, but those are my immediate plans. I mentioned last week that when I'm sewing I tend to listen to podcasts or audiobooks or sometimes I have something on Netflix or one of the myriad of online TV broadcasters um, and I just thought it'd be nice to share a couple of things I've been listening to. My absolute favourite over the last few weeks is from Audible. It's a free podcast called Fashioned and it is free if you already have an Audible subscription. Audible is um, where you go to for audiobooks. So I have got an Audible subscription and it's a fabulous set of podcasts. It's about the um, history of fashion. It's presented by Amber Butchart and Clara Ampho and it's just fabulous. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that. It's a really nice thing to listen to um, at any time, but great when you're already sewing. It makes, I don't know, just I love that kind of thing. Love a bit of history. Um, that's been really, really nice. And another thing that I've really enjoyed, which is from BBC Radio 4 on BBC Sounds, which I don't know if you can get out of the UK, um, is a little sort of light-hearted comedy thing, which is from Joanna Lumley and Roger Allen, who are both actors and married in real life. And it's called something, I've got my phone here, hold on called something about a long marriage. I was only listening to it yesterday, so it should, there we go, first thing that came up. Conversations from a long marriage. Um, it's really just gentle and funny and yeah, kind of relatable. Really enjoyed listening to that. So if you can get hold of that wherever you might be in the world, that's a really nice thing to listen to. Um, Kristen at the Dahlia Society has been recommending some good reads so if you fancy a bit of a read audio or otherwise I'd recommend you go and check her out because she's also doing the Friday Sews thing and um, she had lots of good suggestions from some of her subscribers as well so that's a good one to do. The other thing I'm going to do this week is check out some of the recommendations from lovely subscribers of companies that will do a custom cutting mat for the surface that I've got here. I think in total there were maybe five or six different companies that you all came up with which is brilliant. So I'm going to get in touch with them over the next week or two when I've got time and see if I get some quotes and um, see what they come up with. So that's going to be interesting. I'll report back and let you know how I get on. Before I go, I will also show you something else that I got this week, which is this small loom. And it comes from this chap who makes them, who's called Alex. There we go, got a bit of focus. The idea is it's for visible mending. About, it might be as long as 10 years ago now, David bought me a fabulous <laughs> cashmere dressing gown for Christmas one year. I was a bit annoyed with him at the time because he'd done the classic male thing of running out on Christmas Eve and buying something last minute and it was eye-wateringly expensive and it was one of those times, you know when you get a present and on the one hand you're really pleased to receive it and on the other hand you're thinking I know that cost a lot of money and I'm a bit annoyed. <laughs> anyway, I've forgiven him because as I say it was about 10 years ago and I wear it all the time. But obviously cashmere is not the most hard wearing fabric and it's got a few holes and um, then it's got an almighty hole now around the bottom. So over the last year or two, every time a little hole comes up, I've been mending it using visible mending. Hold on. So that's the kind of thing I've been doing. And literally just when a little moth hole or a little small hole comes up. And then as I say, <laughs> it got thinner and thinner at the bottom, which now, <laughs> 
look, I can actually get my hands through it, looks like that. So I need to think about what I'm going to do with that because obviously it's literally rather unfortunately placed. Um, the good news for me is that he observed this and guess what I got for Christmas this year? I got a replacement one. Um, so I've got a nice lovely new one but I'm not prepared to let this go. It's a bit like a sort of old friend and I like the fact that it's had its little repairs over the last year or two. So I'd been keeping my eye on Alex's page on Instagram for a while because I could see that he was hand making these little darning looms um, because they really really help the process and as you can see I'll put some images up he gets some really really nice effects they're not cheap so I treated myself to this one a he was having a sale and b I had a little bit of Christmas money even at my age you get a bit of Christmas money um, so I treated myself to one but I noticed uh, that every now and then he'll do a little giveaway. He's got one at the moment um, right now. He'll do a little giveaway or there'll be a sale. So if you're interested, go and have a look. I'm also thinking it'd be really nice for elbow patches, on jeans. And some of it, I might even use it where there's not necessarily even a hole in the first place, just to see what the effect is like. So um, yeah, that arrived. I don't think, he's not in the UK, he's somewhere else in Europe. I can't remember where. Um, so it obviously took a little bit of time to arrive, but really, really pleased to have got that. Another new thing to um, have a bit of a play with. I'm still doing my uh, crochet. We've got the last week of crochet chat on Tuesday evening. My plan is now with my granny squares to make a long cardigan. So rather than a, a short, um, shorter jacket, following Esme's inspirational jacket, on the um, sewing bee Christmas special I'm going to do one that's longer I'm going full 1970s as I said so I'm doing one that's much much longer so I've done a little plan I need to do 100 granny squares and at last count I'm on about 40 <laughs> so there's no way I'm going to be finished for Tuesday yeah I'm keeping busy that's for sure I've had a really nice week this week actually uh, all my sewing plans have gone to plan but most importantly the best things happened today which is my husband who is on the kind of clinically extremely vulnerable list had his vaccination and you know all of us right now we are soldiering on and getting through this pandemic but it was a huge relief it was a huge relief when he got his appointment through and although he's not going to have any degree of immunity for another two or three weeks yeah it's nice to begin to feel that uh, we can see some light at the end of the tunnel so that really has been what's made my week okay please let me know what you think if you've got any views on what fabric I should use that'd be brilliant if you fancy subscribing that would be wonderful if you'd like to go and check out the other people who are doing Friday sews I'm going to put them in the description box below and I will pop back and see you soon. All right. Oh, any ideas for podcasts that I might not have already listened to? I'd really appreciate those as well. Thanks a lot. Have a brilliant week. Bye-bye.